Hey guys, what's up? No gym needed here, and I'm stoked this time to bring you this video. That was one of the craziest chapters we've ever seen. So much happened, and what's cool is it would have been, it could be predictable. You could predict that. It's not impossible. But that was nuts. We got so much to discuss right here on No Gym Needed. All right, let's get into it, guys. So Jin Wu did not have a spiritual body manifestation like I thought. But even the Dragon Emperor thought it, so whatever. It was, <laughs> and I quote, the power of death brought into the real world to cloak him. Even though he quote unquote has no hidden forms, that sounds like a pretty hidden form to me. So, anyways, that was an epic battle. Straight up epic. And Jin Wu, of course, is always thinking on his feet, and he's always willing to risk his life. But did he go a little too far this time? I mean, it sounds like he's gonna die. No, Jin Wu. Dude, there's still like at least 15 chapters left. You can't die yet. But, oh man, so much stuff happened. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. It's crazy, guys. Where do we start? Why don't we start with Papa Song's short swords? So at the end of this epic battle, epic battle, most epic battle we've seen so far, and Jin Wu, his Kamish Wrath broke. The Dragon Emperor just laughed. He's like, you really thought, you know, swords made from a dragon's tooth was going to hurt me? Fantasy good. But, man, right when we got to the, I got halfway through the chapter, and I'm like, oh, I was like, wait a second. He's been fighting so much different this whole time. If this was the olden days, dude, right now, he would be using Violent Slash. <coughs> He'd be using all his skills. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, okay, I blew my nose. I was getting too worked up there. <laughs> I was like halfway to the chapter. I wanted to stop and make a reaction video and make a theorizing video, but I was like, no, you know, to the people who actually watch my videos, that's no fair. You gotta, if you start reading a chapter, you get halfway through, you gotta finish the chapter. So I just started thinking, like, toward the end of the time, like, man, he's been fighting so much different than his old self. I'm like, right now, if it was the old Jin Wu, he'd be using Violent Slash. That's what this guy needs right now, Violent Slash. He would even use that when it didn't work. He always fell back on it, and so I'm thinking, like, okay, <clears throat> he needs to do that. Then he cracks his Kamish sword. The second it cracked, and I'm thinking in my head, Dude, this is where his dad's short sword's gonna come out. I knew it. I knew it. And then he brings out his dad's short swords and violent slash. Oh, that was great. <clears throat> that was great. And he uses his dad's short sword to pierce him in the heart. So I think he did the violent slash with the Kamish Wrath. <clears throat> no, 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 no. He did do it with the Papa Song Jin Wu's sword. He stabbed it in his chest, but he knew that wasn't enough. And then, boom, violent slash. That was so Gene Wu. That was his style right there. Man, I was loving that. <clears throat> so, this was crazy. After he did that, the Dragon Emperor was able to keep up with his speed and then slowly pushed him back and then <clears throat> really pushed him back and then actually came and stabbed him right in the black heart. But we already learned... That when you're a full-blown sovereign, a stab to the heart is not enough to kill you. And that's all he got was a stab to Jin Wu's black heart. That ain't enough to kill him. And then the rulers came. I could not believe what we were seeing. I was like, what? I could have sworn the other armies were going to come to where they were. Because it had been so long since Fangs had stopped making that chant and ruining the reception. It doesn't make any sense that they didn't come unless they're still fighting the Shadow Army and they're having a really hard time. But even then, you would think they would retreat from Jin Wu's Shadow Army and go to where the Dragon Emperor is, you know? Even if they were winning or losing against the Shadow Army, who cares? Just get out of there and go to the, the strong guy. So I couldn't believe that didn't happen. But what did happen 
blew my mind. Yo, it was nuts. How could this have happened? So apparently he was, now that he's a full-blown sovereign, he was able to talk to the rulers through Thomas Andre's fragment, basically. He told them his plan. He told them where he was gonna enact that plan. And then he did it. But this is nuts. Like, he needed that, not spiritual body manifestation, but that form to really get enough power to open that gate at the last second. And he didn't know he had that form. So that really was a really sketchy plan, but he did it. And now the greatest fragment, or the, the most brilliant fragment, <laughs> is just wrapping its arms around Jean Wu. It, no, it's wings, it's six wings, and it's just like hugging him. <laughs> I know it can heal him, he's not dead. That wound was not enough to beat him. So, I mean, if he dies from that wound, I'm gonna be angry. Um, but the rulers, they can heal. And the tool to turn back time, I think they can use it on specific objects, not just the earth not just time in general, but possibly time on a person. So it can turn back time specifically on Jean Wu's body, on the wounds he got inflicted on him and stuff. That would be awesome. But then would it take the magic energy out that they released? Who knows? I'm not sure. So that doesn't really sound plausible. But he can heal. Give the guy a ruler potion or something. I know you rulers got some secret drink that heals you up. You've fought so many times. <laughs> You got something. Give him a protein shake or something. Come on. Oh, man. Where do I even go from here? Oh, yeah. This is crazy. In my last video, I was saying that the, they say that the Sovereign's got a command in the beginning, but they never said it was from the Absolute Being. And then, Fangs. All of a sudden, Fangs, the Shadow Soldier who's watching, the Orc Shadow Soldier who's watching the fight, couldn't look away. Because maybe the absolute being who created them wanted him to see this moment. What? They just throw that in there? And it even, it goes, what if, dot, 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 dot. The absolute being who created him wanted him to see us at this moment. Nuts. I don't believe they threw that in there. We're about to get some information dropped on us. Oh man, so the Absolute Being did create the, the the Sovereigns, as well as all the Chaos World Denizens. Um, and, and not only that, it shows that Fangs knew that. The Denizens know that. The Denizens know their origins. They've had, they either, they either have the knowledge in them, or they've had straight up discussions about this kind of stuff. I mean, those High Orcs were like really smart, so. I guess they talk about these things. That's nuts. Okay, so we know now that there's seven six-winged rulers, seven of the most brilliant fragments, and with Osborne, that would have been eight. And yet there was eight sovereigns. Now, they, they took one away with Osborne going to the abyss, <clears throat> and then there was nine sovereigns. So nine sovereigns and seven ruler generals. That's nuts, but we, I guess the four wings would be considered marshals. Um, as far as predictions go, I think Jean Wu is gonna absorb all the shadows that are fighting the other sovereigns, and it's gonna give him a little bit of a boost. And I think the rulers are gonna have some way of healing him somehow. Um, and then the sovereigns are gonna come to where the emperor, dragon emperor is. Or they're just going to try to flee. The Sovereigns might try to flee. And then it might be the beginning of a new story. We're going to get dialogue. Straight up. Finally. We've been waiting for this. It happened at such a crazy time. I didn't think the rulers were actually going to, you know, come in. But we said, we said that the rulers, like, you know, were going to be a wild card and there was no way of getting in contact with them or knowing when they were going to come. But then we said, actually, wait a second, no. They're looking. They're looking on. They're keenly interested. Jean Wu's dad was given the order to protect Jean Wu at the last second. So they were watching everything. So we actually knew that they were being more keenly aware of the situation than we kind of thought at first. 
So I really like that they came at the perfect time and that they teamed up with Jing Wu because, um, you know, that's just how I think it should logically happen if they truly were invested in this war, you know? So I was really happy about that. But still, dang, I can't believe, like, there's no chance. The Sovereigns have no chance. They can run away to the crack between dimensions or something, but I think... Maybe Gene Wu can find them now. I don't know. But they may still have a hiding spot. But their forces are done. If they even show themselves a little bit after that, they're going to be wiped out quick. Um, the rulers brought their entire army. It probably wasn't even necessary. If you can heal Gene Wu, he can wipe out the rest of the armies with his shadow army alone. So yeah, there's no chance for the sovereigns. Unless they find out that they need sovereigns. And what about the Chaos World denizens? They're kind of like, I don't know. They're bred, they're made to obey their sovereigns and destroy stuff based on their sovereign's orders, but I, I feel like they're kind of like victims in this, you know? I feel sorry for them somewhat. But if they were somewhat victims, then I don't think the rulers would have actually put crystals in their neck and all that stuff and did all that. So, they're just as guilty as the sovereigns. But are the sovereigns really guilty they received a command from the absolute being to destroy everything to kill was the absolute being really that like twisted and perverted i find that really hard to believe because it did reward osborne's loyalty sorry my dog was biting her tail i don't know so yeah we also found out of course that the dragon lord convinced the sovereign of beastly fangs and the sovereign of the white flame to betray osborn we could have guessed that something was sketchy there um we knew that they had their allegiance with the dragon emperor because he's a true sovereign everybody was kind of sketchy about all the sovereigns didn't want to believe in the shadow sovereign because of his origin and one of the only sovereigns left remaining is the sovereign of the white flame so why do they call him the White Flame? I'm not really sure, but he's not secretly a ruler, I don't think, or something. Maybe he's a ruler spy, but now nah, it doesn't make any sense because the Dragon Emperor entrusted him implicitly, so um, he's been a sovereign since the get-go. I'm pretty sure he's that blonde guy as well. You got the Sovereign of Transfigurations and stuff, <laughs> and stuff, who knows what the heck those guys do. He's like a crazy great wizard or something maybe he's the wizard that helped the shadow lord who knows i highly doubt that but maybe they're gonna beg for forgiveness from the rulers and say they're gonna stop destroying but i just don't see that happening what i do see happening is <clears throat> the remaining sovereigns finding out that they have no hope and then trying to use the talk no jitsu they're gonna say look we're just doing what we were commanded to do by the absolute being. Can you hate us for that? And then the rulers are going to be like, oh man, this sucks. It's the original, it's the original problem. It's the reason we killed the absolute being. So the rulers to follow through with all out peace in the universe are going to need to kill the sovereigns, but they're still going to feel sorry for them. And the sovereigns are like, man, this this stinks. We were just doing what we were created to do. Somewhere along the line, the absolute being has to come back and explain things. It has to tell the truth. Once and for all. And Earth is going to be the place it happens. And it's going to be through Gene Wu for sure. I'm telling you, Gene Wu's special. He's special. And the Shadow Sovereign is special. The, sh the Shadow Sovereign woke up in the abyss and assumed that the absolute being had put a gift into him but by the time he got to where the absolute being should have been he was already dead he was already dead so we know something's fishy there the absolute being should have gone to the abyss if he died but what happened is the abyss itself awoke with a consciousness so when the light was put out the darkness came to life the absolute being is inside the shadow sovereign and I think it's time that it comes out and explains itself meanwhile fangs is still gonna be over there like oh uh, what the heck's going on 
Thangs is witnessing all of this. He's just, as it always says, the, swallowing the dry saliva down his throat and trying to fix his slack jaw. So guys, I really don't have any more pre predictions at this point. Honestly, we've tried to predict all this stuff already. Now we see how it's working out. It was awesome story writing. I'm super stoked on it. We just got to dig into the next chapter. We finally made it this far. So now, basically all I can do is chapter reviews, chapter summaries, and see if we got any predictions right. It's all about to come out. So, if you're, if you're as stoked as I am, leave a comment below. If you have predictions, let me hear them. And if you guys have been reading this, have been reading it with me this whole time, let me know in the comments below. And also, I'm sure Madame Selner didn't see this part. She would have seen all the rulers and stuff. I don't think she saw this far. So, is Jean Wu gonna leave with the rulers? That would be crazy. That would be crazy. Either Jin Wu's gonna find his true purpose as the Shadow Sovereign, or he's just gonna go back to living as a regular human while the rulers take care of the universe. But that's a crazy ending, you know? So I think the Absolute Being is gonna resurrect through Jin Wu. Jin Wu's gonna go back to being a normal human, the magic energy. I don't know if it's still gonna remain on the Earth or if they're gonna suck it all in through a gate. And the Absolute Being is gonna resurrect. And that's the end of the Shadow Sovereign and the beginning of a new era. Also, I forgot to mention what the drawback was to the Kamish runestone was that it harms your own allies as well. So that's all it was. Yeah, so later.